Hey there, I'm the newbie in sewing and the very idea to get into sewing for me was because I wanted to make a coat, specifically this military inspired vintage fitted coat. I first thought that I would just go online, buy some patterns, print it, cut it and make the coat from that. It turned out it's not as easy. And unfortunately, those pre-made patterns are never actually good for your specific body shape because we're all different. So I decided to learn to make my own pattern, which took me a couple of months of trying and failing and procrastinating. I decided that I'm not going to go through the way I drafted the pattern for this particular coat because first, I just don't even know if anybody's interested and second, this is the first thing I ever drafted and I'm just not good enough, I think so. As an example of what went wrong with my project is the front of the coat, it's actually too tight. Uh, you've seen in the intro that I have a pleat in the back which I really wanted, it's very tailored but um, in the front it turned out to be too tight and unfortunately I only realized it in the very last stage of finishing the coat when I actually attached the buttons and despite I created three mock-ups before that they just weren't complete enough to me for me to understand it. For my main fabric I got this green grey a military inspired wool blend fabric. It has only 20% wool though. It's mostly synthetic material, but it's cheap. I got it with a discount. I don't think it makes sense to get any fancy fabric for the first project that I'm going to waste anyway. And if you want to get like 100% wool and silk lining, that's actually going to get into hundreds of euros for just one project. Um, and then another thing that I think I miscalculated with this fabric is it's just too thick. I watched this video where a guy told that vintage inspired like coats uh, have at least 500 grams per meter weight of a fabric, which this one does, but it's so thick that it doesn't even fit under um, the foot of my sewing machine quite often when you have like more than three or four layers. Uh, another problem with this fabric that I faced that it's a little stretchy because of how much synthetic material it has so I had to um, glue this interfacing to the whole length of the coat to combat the stretchiness because I was afraid it would just stretch under its own weight. I didn't apply as much interfacing to the sleeves though because I kind of wanted to stretch and accommodate for my arm so I only applied it as it's traditionally done to the parts that I want to you want to reinforce. Another good tip that I picked from tutorials online is to duplicate all of your notches with a contrasting thread like here. Um, because your markings, whether you do them with soap like I did or with chalk, they can just get erased when you work or steam. I've also tried and failed to shape my collar using fusible interfacing, but honestly, it just doesn't work. You need to use a uh, traditional horse hair canvas and hand stitch it to the fabric. Um, but this kind of works. You know, I don't compare it to the haute couture kind of clothing, it's more of a, an alternative to buying something in Zara. Speaking about my sewing machine, this is the first ever sewing machine I had. It is Neki, as you can see, an Italian company. Um, I took it only because it was advertised as semi-industrial or something like that. It was supposed to be and it is actually very powerful because I was buying the machine with coat making in mind. I wasn't thinking about making shirts. I definitely will be and I did try but I was buying this machine specifically for heavy fabrics. Um, it is very powerful and it does its job but it's not really great for thin fabrics as i found out when i was trying to make lining for this coat and underwear before it and even a shirt 
it's very tough and the biggest problem I actually have with this uh, with this machine is it does not go slow unfortunately even the slowest setting the slowest it can go is really fast so it is absolutely not beginner friendly which means it's not friendly to me and um, it was tough I had to learn in many tutorials, they actually tell you um, to limit your fusible interfacing to uh, before the seam, which I did. But unfortunately, I figured out that it doesn't actually sit uh, on my fabric secure enough. Maybe it's because my fabric was trying to stretch and the fusible interfacing was preventing it and there was some kind of friction between the fabrics. But I found out that um, some parts of the fusible interfacing just wanted to like detach and I had to go and hand stitch it uh, carefully um, along all of the lines, which is a lot of manual labor, but um, I think it was worth it. For the next projects though, I'm pretty sure I'm going to extend the fusible interfacing further into seam allowance so that the machine actually catches it and secures it in place. As one of the many mistakes that I made, this is an example of me not being attentive and I just caught a piece of fabric, the wrong piece of fabric under the foot and now I have to rip the seam and redo the stitch at least in that place. I also found that using seam reaper is very helpful to just kind of secure the top layer and the bottom layer together because uh, the teeth of the machine that move the fabric are in the bottom and that means just the bottom fabric moves faster and they just kind of desynchronize, which is not nice. Sometimes, unfortunately, this machine failed me, you can see these weird stuff going on i don't even know what happened here um, it always happened when the fabric was too thick or when i moved it too much or whatever i don't expect miracles it is still a domestic machine even though it is advertised as semi-industrial it's not it's a powerful but yet domestic machine this project actually taught me that hand sewing is quite pleasant and I did a lot of this kind of um, pre-stitching, gathering uh, by hand all the time and I actually enjoyed it the most during this project. Here I gathered the edges of uh, the sleeve before attaching it to the main body. As I mentioned, this is not a luxurious coat. Uh, this is my lining. It's a mix of tensile and viscose fabric, which is basically the same, just made by different companies. Uh, it is made of wood pulp, but it is chemically processed. So it is considered to be like semi-synthetic because it's made of natural materials. It kind of works as a natural material fabric, but the process is heavily chemical and controversial. From the brief research that I made for myself watching YouTube videos, um, I can say that Tencel, for example, is good, it's fine to use because it is produced in Austria and in Europe they have regulations, so they have this closed circle production, so they catch all of the chemicals and they don't go out and they don't hurt the environment, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, it's affordable, it's so much cheaper than silk. And it kind of looks and feels the same, so I'm using it. If I have to choose the hardest part of this project, or the most annoying one, it would definitely be the pockets. You can see a lot of the tiny details that I had to do. These are the welt pockets. And the fabric, as I mentioned, is very thick, so having lots of layers of tiny details is a nightmare. I had to do a lot of things by hand because my machine would simply not accommodate this thickness. I could not fit it under the foot. So a lot of things, a lot of things must have been done by hand and also you can see me doing a major mistake here. I forgot about the facing and I'm just stitching onto it and later I will have to cut it out. 
The very fact that I attached facing before attaching collar and making pockets was a disaster. Here, for example, I had to attach some part of a collar by hand stitch on top of the facing while it had to be in between the facing and the front panel. And by default, hand stitch is weaker than the machine, machine stitch, so I will always have to stay conscious about having a weak part, a weak point. I think this is going to be a major point towards buying um, a pattern online instead of making it your own if you don't have enough experience because online patterns at least have instructions and you know what to do first and second. All in all though, I really enjoyed hand stitching. It's very relaxing. You just turn your mind off, your hands work without you basically and you contemplate your existence somehow.